Now we want to take a look at some of the theorems within Boolean algebra. And we'll start with uh, single variable theorems, and then we'll work our way into uh, multiple variable theorems. So the first thing we want to talk about is what is a theorem? Okay, so a theorem is it's a, an observation about a system, observation about something in a system. In this case, it'll be some logic expression or some, uh, some equation. And it is something that isn't intuitively obvious, but if it was true, it would be very helpful as we manipulate more and more logic expressions. So a theorem is something that is stated, and then it needs to be proved. So you have the theorem starts with uh, an observation, then you need to prove it, and then you can accept it as a truth or a fact, and then you can then use it from then on out. So once a theorem is, is proposed, as soon as it's proved, then you just start, and everything is done, and you start using it, and it makes life a lot easier on more complicated uh, equations. So the, in Boolean algebra, to prove something, it's very simple. We are going to use a technique called proof by exhaustion. And what this simply means is that we prove it by, we state some, some theorem, and then we prove it by simply plugging in each and every value that the input variables can take on. And we look at the outputs and see if it is true in all cases. This is, this is possible because the values or the variables in a Boolean algebraic system can only take on the values 0 and 1. So it limits the number of inputs that we can ever have. So this allows us to do proof by exhaustion. Okay, so another thing that we want to do uh, as we start looking at these theorems is we want to introduce the first theorem which allows us to, to basically double the number of theorems that we get for a single proof. So it's a theorem in itself and it is called De Morgan's Theorem of Duality. And this is a very important theorem, like I say, because it allows us to basically get two proofs for the price of one, but it also is used to convert between positive and negative logic if uh, you desire to do so. So De Morgan, De Morgan was a, uh, another mathematician in uh, the 1800s, and he lived during the time of, uh, of George Boole, so his name was Augustus De Morgan, and he he contributed to this set of Boolean algebraic theorems uh, that George Boole was coming up with, and he has two theorems that he added to this framework uh, that are very important, the first one being duality, and then another one uh, that we'll look at right at the end is just called De Morgan's Theorem. Uh, it's, it's the more popular of the two, so uh, it just gets the name De Morgan's Theorem. But he came up with uh, two of these things, the first one being duality. And so the, the theorems that George Boole came up with plus the two that De Morgan added, they stand as the entire set of algebraic uh, theorems that we use in Boolean algebra today. Okay, so. What is De Morgan's theorem of duality? So it is stated as followed. If you have an expression, some, some equation, so let's just say that we had uh, uh, a ended with 0 is equal to 0. So this was, a, was some equation that we stated, and we said this is true. So a ended with a 0 is a 0. So anything ended with a 0 is a 0. Now we kind of, based on the true table for an AND gate, we can kind of see that this is true. And if we wanted to prove it by exhaustion, this is a theorem that we'll cover in here in a minute, but uh, if we wanted to prove this, let's just do an example of what proof by exhaustion would be. I am going to prove it by plugging in each and every possible value for A. Well, since A can only take on two values, it's actually pretty simple. I can say 0 and it was 0 is equal to 0, and we say, is that true? And the answer is yes, it is true. That is absolutely true. And then we go down here and we say, what's the other value that A can take on? 1. So we go 1 and it was 0 is equal to 0. And we say, is that true? And it is absolutely true. So what we have done there is we have used proof by exhaustion to prove this theorem. So this theorem right here is absolutely true. And that's great. We prove it. Now we can start using that. However, Morgan's theorem of duality says that if we take a, an equation, and we convert 
every 0 to a 1 or every 1 to a 0 and every AND operation to an OR or every OR operation to an AND, that following expression will also be true. So here's, what, here's how we can apply it to this example. So we can apply these four rules and say this will result in another true expression. So let's do it to this. So we're going to take A AND of a 0 is equal to 0 and we're going to perform what we call the dual. So this is De Morgan's dual, and the, the dual is actually an operation. So what we're going to be left with is, or what we're, the new expression is going to be A, we're going to change the AND to an OR, and then we have a 0, we're going to change it to a 1, and then that's equal to, uh, we had a 0 before, so we changed it to a 1. This right here now is a new expression, we call this the dual, and this, by De Morgan's theorem of duality, should be true. So this should be true. Now let's prove it to ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to use proof by exhaustion and we'll prove it. So we're going to have, let's plug in all values for A. So A can take on a 0. Ord with 1 is equal to a 1. Well that's absolutely true if you look at the true tip before an OR gate. And then let's put in the other value for A. So we go A can take on a 1. Ord with 1 is equal to a 1. And that's absolutely true also. So this is kind of a, a simple proof that shows a couple things. So number one, we had an original expression and we proved that it was true. And then what we did is we took the dual and we got a second expression that by De Morgan's theorem of duality was also true. So we said, well, let me prove it to myself. I proved it and we're good to go. So what, why this is important is because all we need to do is ever prove an original theorem or an original observation and then once we prove it, we can say, oh, I can also use this other theorem to double the amount of theorems that I have, and I can actually get yet another uh, theorem that is also true that I don't need to prove. So since I've proved duality, and all I need to do is prove the original expression, or the original equation, then I have a second one for free. So you always talk about the original, and then you talk about the dual expression. So that's kind of the first overlying uh, theorem that we that we start with and then as we go through what we call single variable theorems we can derive or we can prove the first theorem and then we get the dual for free okay so now let's take a look at our first theorem our first single variable theorem and that is going to be what is called identity so let's take a look at what identity is identity. Okay, so the identity theorem says this. Anything ORD with a, with a zero will yield itself. So a variable ORD with a zero will yield itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the original expression and uh, let's call our, let's just say some arbitrary variable A. And we're going to OR that with a zero. And we, this, this uh, theorem states that that should be itself. So a variable ordered with a zero is itself. And you say, okay, well that's great. <laughs> Let's prove it. So we'll come down here and we'll go ahead and prove it. So we'll say, okay, a zero ordered with a zero is indeed a zero. And so it was itself. And then a one ordered with a zero is equal to a one. And that is indeed itself. So that is true. So we've just proved that the identity theorem is true. Now, this was based on, you had to know what an OR operation was. So you had to know that an OR looks like this. So 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the output is 0, 1, 1, 1. So you had to know what these operators were. So 0 ORD with 0 was a 0, and 1 ORD was with a 0 was a 1. That, this had to be known, but this was an axiom. So that was the truth about the system that we have already accepted. So this is identity. And let's go ahead and get the dual, which we get for free. So we'll say the dual of this is going to be A anded with a 1 is equal to itself. Notice that in a dual, we don't do anything to the variable. We just bring the variable forward. We don't complement it or anything like that. We just change an OR to an AND, or an AND to an OR, and then we change any 1s to zeros and any zeros to 1s. So this is the dual of identity, and it is also true. But we'll just pr let's just prove this last one, so and then we won't have to prove any more. But just to verify to ourselves that this does in indeed work, so we'll go A, let's plug in all possible values. We'll have 0 and with 1 should be itself, and a 1 and with a 1 should be itself. 
And is that true? Well, if you know, try to remember the uh, truth table for an AND gate, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the outputs are going to be 0, 0, 0, 1. So what we have here is 0 and with 1, 0 and with 1 should be a 0. So this one right here is true. And a 1 and with a 1 is equal to a 1. So this one right here is indeed true. So we've actually proved the dual. But, but more importantly, what we had is we have now proposed the identity theorem. We had an original expression. We proved it, verified that it was true. And then we had a dual of that, which by default should be true. We went ahead and proved it, and we verified that it was true. Okay, so what does a, how does the identity theorem help us when we get into a logic circuit? Well, if you think about the original, if I had A, and for some reason the logic just turned out that it was always ORed with a variable that was always a zero. So just the way that the system fell out, uh, this other input to the OR ended up being a zero. Well, we could just say that that is equal to A. So if I ever had that situation, I could just replace that in my circuit with a wire. And that would allow me to eliminate a gate. So the identity theorem can actually be used to minimize logic or reduce the amount of logic circuits in your system. OK, let's take a look at another one, another single variable theorem. And that is going to be the null element. Now, the null element says that the original is going to say that if you have a variable and you OR it with a 1, the result will be a 1. And so we say, OK, well, that, that, seems, uh, that seems reasonable. Uh, could we prove that? Well, let's prove it really quick. 0 OR with 1 is equal to what? That's equal to a 1. And then a 1 OR with a 1 is equal to a 1. So indeed, that was true. So that's great. What does this mean to us? Well, what it means is that the same thing over here. If we ever had, let's say we had A, and just the way that the system fell out after we got everything in, entered and we looked at the, the constraints on the inputs, we had A and it was anded with a 1, or excuse me, to me, ORed with a 1. So it was ORed with a 1. That would equal simply a 1. So if we ever saw that situation, what we could do is we could simply replace that with a wire to the power supply to produce a logic 1. So this would eliminate a gate. All right, let's take a look at what the dual would look like. So the dual of the null element theorem is going to be A. I'm going to convert that and to an, or that or to an and. Take the ones and flip them to zeros. And this says that anything anded with a zero is a zero. And that makes sense if you think about the truth table for an and gate. Any time you have a zero in the inputs, the output will indeed be a, a zero. The only time you ever have the output of an AND operation be a 1 is when both the input variables are <coughs> a 1. OK, so that's the second single variable theorem. Let's take a look at another one, which is called the idempotent theorem. And that looks like this. That is I-D-E-M-P-O-T-E-N-T, idempotent. And what this says is, basically, if you have a variable and it is ORed with itself, then we will have itself. So that's the, that's the theorem. So you say, well, I don't know if that works or not. Let's, let's prove it really quick. So 0 ORed with 0 is, that's indeed a 0. And 1 ORed with 1 is indeed a 1. Well, that checks out, and that checks out. Well, that's great. So I've got, <coughs> I've got a theorem here. Uh, idempotent actually uh, scales even beyond just two versions or two operations on Excel. What it's really, where it really becomes powerful is if you have A times A times A times A, or A ORed with A ORed with A up to an infinite number, that also equals simply A. So the dual of this now will be <coughs> as follows. Anytime you have A anded with an A, it's also A. So this is the dual. Notice that I don't do anything to the input variables. I simply just bring them straight across to form the dual, and then I change an OR to an AND and an AND to an OR. So that was the dual of this expression. So this is interesting. So <clears throat> if I ever had a situation where I had a logic circuit that was minimized and I had or manipulated and I just ended up with you know something where I had A or with itself. And you said, there's my logic expression. You could just simply replace that with a wire, and that would allow you to minimize the logic or reduce logic.
Okay, so let's take a look at uh, yet another one, another single variable uh, theorem. And this one now will be the complements. And notice this uh, E right there, so it's complements theorem. And what this states is that if you ever have a variable ORed with its complement, so A ORed with A naught, that is going to simply be a 1. So you say, oh, that's kind of interesting. Well, let's prove it. So 0 ORed with, so let's say A was 0. If I complement that, it would be 1. And that's equal to a 1. Okay, so then what if A was a 1? and it was ORed with its complement, it would be a 0, well, that's going to be a 1 also. So basically what it means is in an OR operation, if you ever have a 1, the output's going to be a 1. Well, if you have a complement of itself, if A is a, there's always going to be one of these that's a 1. If A starts as a 0, then its complement will be a 1. If it starts as a 1, well then it itself will be a 1, and it will always produce a 1 out of an OR operation. So this is great, because if you ever had a situation where you had A, ORed with itself, you could simply replace that with a wire to the power supply in order to produce a logic 1 on this. So that would allow you to reduce the logic. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the dual of this. So if this was the original observation or the original proposal, this would be the dual. And what this looks like is we would simply have A and it now with a naught is equal to a zero. So is this true? Well, if you think about it, let's plug in a's and let's plug in proof by exhaustion. So we'll have a was a zero to start with. So and it with its invert its naught, a naught, that would be equal to a zero. And then if it started as a one, you'd and it with a, its naught, which is a zero, and that's equal to zero. So just like the original expression, you have an and operation. Anytime there's a zero on the inputs of an AND, you get a zero. Well, if you have a variable and its complement, one of them will always be a zero. One will always be a one, one will always be a zero. That AND operation, anytime you have an AND with a zero, the output is a zero. So that is the complements theorem. And then finally, our last single variable theorem is going to be called involution. So involution is where Involution. Involution is going to be where you take a variable and if you complement it twice, it will be itself. So a very simple thing. There, there is no dual to this theorem because there's no and operations or there's no zeros and ones. So involution is simply a double complement. And all this is really saying is that if you ever have an inverter and you have two of them in a row, you could replace that with a wire. Uh, if we wanted to prove it, I mean, you know, we could prove this. You can make it zero, not, and then you take that and you knot it. So zero not would be a one. And you take that and you knot it, and that's equal to a zero. So yeah, that proved. Then you could do the same thing with a one. So you'd have a one not all knotted. So you take that, invert it, it'd be a zero not. So then would be a one. So it became itself. So yeah, we proved it. <coughs> this theorem is interesting and it's very useful. And what's interesting about it is that when you go to implement logic circuits, of course when you have two inverters, you can get rid of them and just put a wire. But this involution theorem is actually used more widely going the other way. It's when you have a wire in a logic circuit and you decide that you need to have an inverter for some reason. So for example, you have a wire, it's perfectly legal to insert two inverters on that wire and then use the inverters accordingly. So an example would be something where, let's say you had an AND gate <coughs> and it was driving, okay, it was just sitting there. And you came along and said, well, I'm doing this in CMOS and I don't have an AND gate, I only have NAND gates. How could I convert that into a NAND gate? Well, you could come along and say, by the, th the involution theorem, I'm going to insert two inverters on that line. This is perfectly legal. So now what I'm going to do is I can take this inverter and just butt it up against this AND gate, and I'll represent it as simply an inversion bubble, and I've created a NAND gate. I mean, that's the definition of a NAND gate. And then I still have this other inverter, but look at what I have now. I have two circuits that can be implemented with CMOS logic, a two-input NAND gate and an inverter. So I went from something that I couldn't directly implement with CMOS to something that could. So that represents the, the single variable theorems within the Boolean algebraic framework.